It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1987, recorded May 10th, 2024. Anchors away! On this episode of the Gizwiz, Dick D. comes back from Pepcom's... What was it? Home Now Play? Home Now, Well Now. Home, home Now, Well Now. Here we go. In three, two... On this episode of the Gizwiz, Diggity comes back from Pepcom's home well, home now, well now. I have a brand new Crappy Corner theme, plus it's a little late in the month, but we get to find out what the heck was it. All next on the Gizwiz. It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now, and here he is, the well now of hosts, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Diggy D? I'm doing good, sir, and you? Doing great. Doing very good. Man, it's been- Dollywood. Dollywood. Yes, Dollywood. you've been there? We're going to Dollywood, baby. Yeah, I love Dollywood. <laughs> Dollywood is okay. Dollywood is one of those kind of classic parks that uh, I my parents, I think, said it best. They went recently, and they said, at first I got there, and I was kind of like, I don't know about this. I don't know if I'm going to have the best time. And then they ended up having a great time. Um, oh, it's like an old-timey park, right? A little bit. It's, it has a bit of old school to it. Like, for example, they have, you know, a train that kind of goes around the park. You know, I'm kind of used to the Disneyland, Disney yeah, yeah. World train. This train, though, is a real train. I think it's coal fire. And they'll let okay. you know on the train that you get on it. And they go, by the way, if any of the soot gets in your eyes, it'll hurt <laughs> like hell. But don't worry about it. You don't need to ask us to stop. Just don't rub it. And it'll be fine. Click. It was like, <laughs> okay. And it was just <laughs> that was a different feel than the Disney experience. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then also this train, it just goes into a field. Like it's not, like at one point, there's not even park anymore. You're just on a train oh, <laughs> ride. It's like, huh, this feels very different. It's a different time that they came up. But still, it's a wonderful, great park. Um, there's, they have this cinnamon roll like that they make uh, like fresh. The best cinnamon, it's like a cinnamon loaf thing it's probably oh, no, eight thousand yeah. calories it's so good oh, it's really that's good. nice yeah no no i like yeah. dolly parton no, she's uh, oh my gosh um, living yeah. legend yeah and and um don epstein uh who's written some stuff with me for med uh produced some shows and one show she was in and he said i have never had a performer of her caliber at the end of the rehearsal as everybody was go leaving, she came up to me. And she said, "Don, if there's anything you want me to do over, or anything you want me to do differently, I have no commitments tonight. I can, or I can come in early if you want tomorrow." <laughs> he said. He said, first of all, she was 100% doing everything <laughs> right, and second of all, who, what big star comes over and offers to hang around? To do things over. So. I yeah. I, I mean she she seems like uh, she exudes the passion for her craft of entertainment yeah. um, that is really difficult to find in current entertainers. Um, and she has always, any time I have ever seen her, she just seems so. Uh, down to earth, I guess, but like, yeah, you know, no, just yeah. a human connection with people. She doesn't, yeah. I, 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 she, and that is an exact kind of type of story is, hey, I'm here to get this right. I don't have anything else to do today. If you don't think I got it right, let me know, because I want to <laughs> stick around, because that's why I'm here. This is my job. And exactly. um, yeah. yeah, it's humbling. She's, she's, uh, she seems one of a kind. One of kind. And you're probably too young for the Johnny Carson days. But yeah. She no. would. She was on Johnny Carson once, and Johnny Carson said, "You look f fabulous." And she said, "Johnny, let me tell you something. It takes an awful lot of money <laughs> to make me look this cheap." 
and that was one of the funniest things I ever heard. <laughs> because everything she wears is like beyond. It's just great. It's yes. just great. Rhinestones. It's sort of like, like I'm in on the jokes too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I think that's probably the most endearing part of her is uh, her ability to have the exact perfect context, you know, the exact perfect yes, exactly, exactly. point of view on <laughs> on the situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Not, not unlike the Gizwiz in certain <laughs> aspects. <laughs> exactly. You know, I really think, I think we're... Uh, you know, amongst equals, uh, Dolly Parton, yeah. the Gizwiz, you know, I think that we're all in the, you know, in the same industry and honestly, I think uh, at the same caliber, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, and we use the same time frame. <laughs> yeah. It, we, hours and minutes. I mean, the, the, the things I, that are similar. So I know. things that are similar. I know. You know, I breathe air, she breathes air. Pff, it's like we're yeah. twins. Like we use twins. our own names. Uh, I mean, it, I could go on forever. I and know. I don't think I will. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> Don't think we need to. Um, hey, I saw the coolest thing on Facebook that yes. there's a museum coming by. There's a tell me about what's going on oh, with okay. Disneyland. All right, so there is a very famous museum called the Norman Rockwell Museum. Norman Rockwell, the artist, and we've we've uh, done. Uh, satires of Norman Rockwell on many occasions. So the Norman Rockwell Museum is doing Museum Gone Mad Bash, and they are having it. It starts June 6th through October, and they, yeah, yeah it's June 6th through, I think it's October 3rd. Anyway, just go to the museum and, and you'll, there's a, a link there to all the mad stuff. It's on for several months, but they they did some videotaping here and they said, you know, we can rent a hotel room and we want to do some interviews in the city. And I said, well, you know, I have a studio. You can use Disneyland. And they said, oh, can we bring a couple of extra people? And Dennis said, if they're going to bring extra people, tell them that my apartment can be the green room. So it was great. <laughs> I didn't it realize was great. you made it. You, you took over Dennis's apartment for the green room. Uh, yeah. I, uh, well, when, when Dennis said, how are you going to fit all those people in your studio? Do they know that it's like one? I told him it's a studio. He said, <laughs> look, I'll, let's buy some wine. Where are these people? Oh, I guess this is the Norman Rockwell Museum. So they are New Yorkers. Right. Yes, so yes. They exactly, do know. Exactly. Okay, okay. And so I thought, you know, now I better dust everything. And then I thought, you know, it's been seven years since I put everything here. And during those seven years, I gave people stuff and I put other stuff there that wasn't mad. So I spent like three days doing the muse the uh, Disneyland over. And I made a little under two minute video of the results uh, in this. Event. I guess there's one advantage of having an interview done in your own studio. And that's that you tend to clean the place up a bit for a presentation because you know it's going to be on video. That wall is uh, 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 um. <laughs> The gizmo the is theater. Theater. And I have spruce up all the shelves. Although just to cover stuff I missed, I do have a notice that <laughs> all dust on the shelves of it's Disneyland <laughs> is original dust. From the Mad Offices at 485 Madison Avenue. Madison Avenue. So Madison. do not touch or dust. All right. So that's tons of mad stuff. And so that's the mad side. And then the Dick's Gadget Warehouse. It's the Dick's Gadget Warehouse shelves. <laughs> and then my mad book collection. I mean, fans write me and say, do you have the third printing of your Mad Murders the Movies book? The one with the blue binding? And I go, <laughs> I'm not sure I have a copy of my Mad Murders the Movies book. Um, actually, that did happen once. And I had to go on eBay and buy somebody's used book. And then this is where... Uh, we do the Gizwiz show and ask the tech guy and ABC news all comes from here. All right. I'm just showing you it while everything is 
spick and span. It's looking good. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. You know what? Even I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. That is anyway, really yeah, I, I, cool. It, so they, they it, recorded it, interviews? Were you they being did, interviewed? They did me, then they did the editor of Mad, then they did the editor of Mad what? and me, and then there was another person coming over, but turned out to be a no show and Sam Viviano, the art director came over. So it was great fun. That's it was awesome. great fun. That's the great. The thing is, the thing is you forget that when you're dealing with a museum. So just today they said, Oh my God, we've gone through the, all the interviews and everything you said. Do you have any of these? You talking to Gene Rayburn, you talking with so and so, you with Lynn Man Lynn Manuel Miranda, uh. you and so and so. <laughs> a picture of the train Bill rent rented. A picture and I say, Oh my God. <laughs> it's like you're putting together a court case. You didn't realize yes, you were gonna get subpoenaed. No, no. <laughs> no. And, and also, you know, these the, the mad days were before the smartphone. If I had a <laughs> right. smartphone you know what they're then, asking for is for you to go through bins and <laughs> pictures. Yeah, no, I'm simply and... gonna I'm simply gonna write them. And and, and f fortunately, at the end, he said, "If you don't have any of this, and it is okay to uh, use images from your book, let us know about that." Ah. And <clears throat> and so the rights to Good Days and Mad have reverted to me, so I own the copy. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to just tell them, take anything you want out of the book That's and great. run with it. Yeah, That's great. So. You could also, you should actually switch this to your advantage and say, you all can use whatever you find. As long as you come in here, organize, catalog, archive, everything. <laughs> That's, this is that which, how you, you get something out of it, Dickie D. It's, all right. Oh, come no, on I did. in. But, uh, you know, you got to archive it all. You got to help me out. They That's left cool. a box of Danish that was... <laughs> I, I I wrote to Lennon, I said to the woman, uh, and I'm blocking her name out now, uh, Stephanie. I said, Stephanie, could you buy these this Danish locally? It's the best Danish I ever uh, ate. And she said, no, we bought them up in Connecticut where we have an office. So anyway, but the Danish was unbelievable. That's awesome. That's anyway, anyway, should we go from one show to another? Yes, let's head uh, to Pepcom. Pepcom. Exactly. Okay, uh, three gadgets from Pepcom. And here's number one. Okay, we're here at Reolink. Now, I'm quite shocked because it's a security company and someone has broken their window. <laughs> I think, however, since this is a mini window, it was not secured with a camera. But anyway, Guy's going to tell us. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's, yeah. what's new here? What's new? Well, we've got the new Argus 4 Pro. This is the world's first 4K battery camera that incorporates dual lens technology as well as color night vision. The solar technology. power, battery power, and um, basically the two dual lenses stitch two images together to create an ultra wide 180 degree field of view. Oh my gosh. Uh, and when you say solar powered, um, it, is the battery in there with a solar panel that's external? Correct. It's, the battery is included inside and the solar panel is separate. On the roof? On the roof or on the other side of the wall. So you could mount this on one side of the wall and mount the solar panel on the wall which has the most light. Um, but it also has a really cool feature called Color X Night Vision. And the uh, low light lenses and a high end sensor allows this camera to see in total darkness with color. Wow. Yeah. Now, now God, you have a video. Oh, is this it? This is going off again. I'll, I'll cut to that in a second. But yeah, yeah Reolink's been developing security solutions for over 15 years. And we're the pioneers in dual lens technology and high res ultra high resolution uh, camera feed. So this is a, a daytime image view. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Yeah, this I is can. Daytime. This is daytime. And this is 4 a.m. Total darkness. Wow, that is amazing. That's and actually really cool. What does the system cool. cost? The uh, camera this one, with the uh, solar under two hundred dollars. So one under two hundred dollars. Yeah. And everything's recorded to um, micro SD. Here, you put in a micro SD up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Uh, you have the, the USB C port here, so you can power it via the solar panel. Sorry, open that up, or you can power it via charge it, recharge it via USB C. 
Uh, there's no ongoing cloud storage fees, so once you buy it, it's set and forget. No ongoing cloud storage and fees. You get is all the it features. in the marketplace now? Or June coming? 10th. June 10th. It's available on reolink.com or uh, amazon.com. Okay, I like it a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Dual, yeah. <laughs> Uh, t Steven Toronto is saying dual lens technology. I I have that. My glasses have that. My eyes. Yes, 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 yes. Give a 180 degree view. Uh, that seems actually pretty cool. So uh, the two lenses give a big wide view and it's stitched into one, one yeah, video. 180, well, yeah, 180 degree view. That's neat. But I like that night vision thing. Me That's too. The best, the best color I've seen in total darkness. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So typically yeah. night a night vision uh, camera can either just be like super sensitive or can have like IR blasters that blast uh, infrared light onto uh, an area and then you get a black and white IR image. You can see, you know, a human eye cannot see IR light. So a uh, burglar wouldn't realize that they are visible. Um, but this looks almost like a different type of thing because I wasn't seeing that on uh, on his video. Not uh, sure on the camera. Exactly. No, yeah, no, no. Y yeah, you mean all the mini lenses around it? Right. The, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure, um, but the guy, that's that seems very interesting. They, you the really can't. Decent. And security cameras are difficult because you know he's mentioning not having cloud storage and stuff like that. It's like there's never a security camera that has it all. <laughs> like, right, right. It's gonna, it's gonna either be battery powered, and then, and you know, have the SD card storage. Or some of them are gonna talk to the cloud, and some of them are gonna talk to your own local area, area NAS, and some are gonna be wired, and some are gonna be 4K, and some are gonna be. It's just like there's so many gives and takes with security systems. So the pluses for this one is that it's battery operated, can be solar powered, records to SD and has a really wide angle field of view, plus awesome night vision. Um, yeah. that's, that's neat. And under $200. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And coming uh, next month. If it is really um, 180 degrees, stick one on each side of the house, you got 360 yeah. degree coverage. It's full <laughs> yeah, home they, security they, for, wow. you know, 800 bucks. Done, um, under 800 yeah, bucks. Yeah. And the like 400, it. right? For oh, two yeah, cameras. Exactly. Oh, 200, um, yeah. Okay. We stopped by Anchor. Anchor! We like them. We're here at Anchor Solex. Now, Emily, we saw a unit sort of like this last year. This looks bigger. Is, is this brand new? So the actually the Anchor Swix F three hundred was introduced last year at IFA, and we launched it at CES. Um, so earlier this January, uh, just the portable power station itself. What we launched very recently is uh, our home power panel, what allows the F three hundred to be coupled to your house. Oh, so th th this can be used as a portable unit. But in an emergency, is this the, the interface? Exactly, exactly. So the interface uh, is a do-it-yourself interface. So you just have to install that power panel to your house. And uh, it's AC coupling, so meaning that it will also work with any rooftop solar system. And in case of a power outage, uh, you can use the, the power stored in the S800 to power your entire house. Well, and, and how much power are we talking about? The unit that you're looking at right now, we're looking at 3.84 kilowatt hours. Okay. Uh, the particularity of that one is that you can also have expansion batteries to go all the way up to about 54 kilowatt hours. Okay. Is there a solar option also for charging? Yes. So anything that would be a rooftop solar system, oh, okay. we don't have that at Anchor. However, we do have portable solar panels um, and you can fully recharge that one with portable solar panels as well. Okay, so that one is out now. Yes. And this you said just came out last week? Yes, exactly. And what does this do? Uh, so this one is our modular um, X1 home energy system. Um, so it's a battery wall. Um, so it's a permanent solution uh, compared to the S800. 
Um, here you're looking at the inverter and under you're looking at battery modules. Um, so modular meaning that you can add multiple battery modules. Uh, one battery is 5 kilowatt hours and you can expand it to 180. So this would be permanently installed yes. and, and charging itself while you have power. Yes. And then if power goes out, this will automatically kick in to repower your house. Correct, but not just it. For example, you can also be in the case of you can charge it with your rooftop solar panel during the day and during the night you can use what's stored and be completely off-grid as well. I was just going to say, yes. in that way, if you had a cabin yes. in the woods, it totally you don't need a power yes, company. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. this is yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> this is fun stuff here. Uh, now I have to get a cabin in the woods. <laughs> That's the only problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is really cool. So, uh, by the way, I recently just bought an Anchor battery, and this has a solar port on it. So I'm actually kind of oh, excited about, oh, about okay. that. This is a much different port. Uh, it's just an AC port. Um, I don't have any panels for them yet, but... Uh, that is something uh, I'm actually pretty excited about. Is that about. a pop-up light on the top? Yeah. So this was actually, it was like $40 off on Amazon. And I was just like, <laughs> I had to buy it. It's typically 140 bucks, And with the 40 bucks yeah, off, Yeah, I remember like, that from uh, a press event. Yeah. The top lights up. Yeah. yeah so the, the top will pop off, up. Yeah, there it is. And yep. then you can uh, light it. And it has two light settings. And I've actually That's used this great. quite a bit as... In, around this office, you know, uh, they're behind the computer, for example, like I want to plug in cables, but I can't see. And so I've been like turning on the lamp and like setting it down around the inside. Uh, that's actually why it's uh, right here. But um, anyway, I think that uh, getting into solar, uh, this DIY sort of you buy the batteries, you can get the panels, maybe you already have panels on the top of your house kind of match them with new battery or battery manufacturers like Anchor. That is just so, so, so cool. I mean, the the fact that, that you could get something like this and you can just kind of buy it off their website yeah. is really, yeah. really cool. You don't have to go through a distributor and, I, and you just get it. I believe they're offering a thousand dollars off uh, for the first amount of time since the system came into being. Gosh, that is so cool. This is definitely the dream, you know, is to have yeah. some type of off-grid-ish situation. Uh, or the cabin in the woods, you know. Just... <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, I don't need my normal house to be off-grid, but the cabin, that one. That's it, that's it. <laughs> That's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I just think that these are, uh, especially their, their portable um, option, if you can kind of use that as not only as your, your house battery, but also as what it is, that massive portable generator almost, but it's just a battery. Um, that's so neat that you could be invested yeah. into a big old thing like that and then also take it on the RV trip. <laughs> Yeah, hey, absolutely. Like, absolutely. We're throwing a party in Burning Man with all the power. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome. Uh, Solex um, from Anchor. Solex from permanent Anchor, yes. And, at home. Okay, and from the home side of the show, uh, something for the chef. Okay, so sous vide cooking is one thing. Air frying is another. But evidently, you can do both at once, like... Drown your meat. Some I don't know. Ari will know. We'll ask him what this does. Nice to see you guys. Welcome to Pet Palm Home Now 2024. So, uh, yeah, Dick is right. Uh, you can do actually three different modes with the chef maker. You can actually have a grill mode, a sous vide mode, and an air fryer mode. So it actually isn't just two. It is three different modes. The chimney um, is not part of this, No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> chimney is not part of it. I was going to say, this is the weirdest <laughs> kitchen gadget. 
it is all here. So there are three modes you can do. Unfortunately, I, c I cannot demo it here at the show other than turn it on. Okay. Um, but the grill mode uh, works by using a probe like you would uh, traditionally when you're grilling at home. You would insert the probe and you would grill to an internal temperature. The chef maker does the same thing, essentially detecting the internal temperature of the, of the meat um, that you set it to. You can set to just about any cut of meat and you set to the different uh, wellness and doneness that you'd like. So you can select medium well, hit play. You can collect sous vide style or classic yeah, style. Yeah, now I so see. That's the difference. Yeah, so I see a water thing. It is. It isn't true sous vide in that it is not sous vide immersion. So true sous vide is in a bag. Oh, of I water, see. Is right? this like sous vide so this injection? Is sous -vide, this is sous vide style, is what oh, I would okay, call it. Okay. So it actually uses um, uh, hot air steam air. to recreate ah. a uh, like a sous vide environment inside oh, okay, the device okay. for more even cooking. Okay. So it's not the true immersion, but it is an emulation of it. Okay, so it's um, not like... Uh you can see oh, you just okay. fill it with water Build and then with there's water. an injector in okay. there. So it's a yeah. steam okay. oven? Okay. Um, it's, more, it's more for controlling temperature than it is so much for cooking with water, per se. Okay, now I think the last Pepcom, it was coming in the future. Is this in the marketplace? It's fully available now. It was on Kickstarter last year and then went to full uh, retail in October and is now yeah available pretty much at any of your, your home retail. And uh, retail price? It's $349. $349. Yeah, you can find it on, on sale for $299 if you're lucky. Oh, okay. Definitely okay. a premium device. It's, it's, we call it a combination oven, not an air fryer, so that would be the more correct term is a combination oven. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. No, no problem. Ha! Huh. I have so many opinions. Um, okay. <laughs> and, and honestly, I think that... So, I've, ne I've never quite heard of this type of cooker, uh, I guess. It's called... It calls itself online. Um, it, oh, you it, mean a lot of people do this? A water oh, atomizer? Oh, what they're doing online. Yeah, the I've atomizer. never quite heard of this so like i've i feel like i've paid attention to uh, to ovens air fryers june ovens sous vide i mean like name your cooking device and i've tried to pay attention i'm not quite ex exactly sure what type of oven this is because it needs water that seems like a steam or but I, I caesar's asking do i cook a lot i can i cook medium I cook a medium amount. I can cook my own food, but uh, not not every day. Um, I'm so interested in what this is. So it sounds like, so with sous vide, yeah, you'd stick your food in a bag, put it in water, heat up the water, and well, one of for the main advantages, time. say it again? Uh, for a very long time, the for meat has to stay in very there. long time. And the main advantage is, is lower temperature long time and that means precise cooking so instead of cooking at 300 degrees for 15 minutes you cook at 165 degrees for an hour and a half and then you keep the juices in there it kind of locks it all in it's almost like foolproof cooking um and so my guess is the sous vide style especially with this water atomizer almost like steam thing is it seems like it's going to achieve those lower temperatures. This is my guess. This is this is my speculation. Yeah, right. yeah. Is it's going to achieve those lower temperatures and slowly cook the meat, similar to a sous vide. Sous vide style is kind of what he was saying. Is yeah. my interpretation of what he was saying. Yeah. And now it, it looks I like got they the got the impression it would make everything juicier because it would not be sucking the juice out because yes. it's adding. Uh, right, right, and 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 also, you know, and these steam ovens have actually been very popular at restaurants because they rapidly heat up food, but they don't have a lot of the downsides that any that either air frying the blast uh, heaters or even microwaves have. You know, the steam the steaming can cook through kind of full out, and it, it's more elegant and it makes a more elegant type of food afterwards, which is why restaurants love them because customers can't tell. This is rapidly heated, <laughs> but in a steam oven, you know, they can't tell that. So that's why restaurants love these steam, like high-end restaurants love the steam ovens. Um, but you can see lobster and, so it seems like, it seems like there's something to it. 
Either that or they have yeah. really a great marketing team. <laughs> Or people who know how to make charts. Or know how to, yeah, they have, they have some people who know how to make some a really good image. I'm not, uh, I'm so curious. Really, at the end of all that, mm. it seems so expensive I will never get to test it. But I'm I'm very curious about it. And um, I would, would say. they take it, a, a million seven hundred thousand on the Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. People are interested. Yeah, they're interested. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. I also really like the probe that is integrated in because I always feel weird sticking the probe in and then like snaking it through the door. I'm always like, this thing is going to melt. There's no way this is going to work. Very cool. Well, with excellent. that, excellent. let's move to... You know you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Core. Get it. Okie dokie. We asked the patrons. We're a little late in the month doing this because we had to change <laughs> things around for Pepcom and, and uh, for the museum thing. And Yes. Yeah. Uh, we okay, we so, recorded uh, our so, last episode on the last day. And then we kind of, uh, we also delayed this episode. So it seems, yeah, it seems very far. Anyway, so the May Madness uh, patron poll is up. And Mark H. suggested last week on, in the comments, Dollar Tree Gadgets. So I liked Dollar Tree Gadgets. That was the only suggestion we got. And instead of, uh, I did actually rack my bread for t brain for the other two themes, then I thought, let's just expand on Mark's theme. So we have Dollar Tree Gadgets, Five Below Gadgets, oh. and TJ Maxx slash Marshalls. Which is a, t I had to research this. this is, that's a type, there's a, that's a subcategory of retailer called off price retail. So any of those, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross. Uh, TJ Maxx and Marshalls are the same company, right? I think, I think those might yeah. be owned, be owned. And same thing with Home Goods, Marshalls and Home Goods. Yeah, yes, is, Home Goods is part of that too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that yeah. type of thing is the, is the, uh, you know, the big discount stores to get all the all the little discount items. Wow. So my thought That's was basically Dollar Tree is a dollar, five below is five dollars, yeah. and Marshall's is like a little bit more. Anyway, um, so that was the three themes. Which which do you think the patrons went for? You know, uh, I think it's always fun to see what what could you possibly get for a dollar. So I'm going to say dollar. That's a good one. That's a good one. This was uh, I. I'll, Commented a lot, and a lot of comments said this is a hard one to choose from. Dollar Tree and Five Below actually tied with 27% of the vote, meaning that TJ Maxx and Marshalls won with 46% oh of the vote. Oh my gosh. So it was one almost one fourth, one fourth, and, and a little less than half. We wow. would have to go to a runoff if uh, this was an election. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, those off price retail uh, spots is, uh, is the category, which honestly I didn't even think about it until after. This is so similar to the sales. <laughs> category now that is just Ross. But anyway, I love it. I'm actually very excited about this because they have the weirdest stuff in those stores. And I'm going to go all over Orlando shopping, which is going to be super fun. No, I love those stores. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Love them. With that, I recorded a video earlier. So let's check it out. So as you already know, this month's gadget theme is gadgets from disc or off priced retailers. So I headed to the local Marshalls and I picked up a gadget which I've actually seen online like every once in a while and I wanted to give it a, a test out myself because I, my curiosity has been scratched enough it's time to actually buy one of these and test it out. It is a lint shaver. This is a travel lint shaver. Like I said, I got it at Marshalls. $5, $4.99. The idea is that as you have a few items that get pilly and linty, you could use this like a like you would shave your face. You can shave your clothes and things like that. Always wanted to try it, so glad I got to pick it up for only five bucks. I'm gonna use my little like works 
knockoff thing to open this blister pack because I hate blister packs. Okay, so here it is. It feels cheap, okay? First off, that thing feels very cheap, okay? Cheapy plastic, this on-off switch. Honestly, it's pretty good. I like how big it is. Nice, nice satisfying. Does it have a, whoa! Okay, it had a protective cap that went over that direction. There's where it gets shaved. It looks like it has a little trap down here. Yep, for the lint. And then I guess the batteries go in the back. I accidentally touched this and it depressed down. That is not hard metal right there. And then on the back, yeah, we have our place for two AA batteries. So those are gonna go in there. Let me get it all batteried up and I'll be right back. Okay, the lint shaver has batteries. Turn it on for the first time. Whoa, this is like a propeller spinning inside of here. That is crazy. It seems like it's gonna take off. Terrifying. Okay, so obviously I need to get some linty things. I have this uh, blanket here, which as you can see, if you get up really close, definitely is a bit pilly. There's also some pet hair on this. Always difficult. Maybe we can shave off a few of these. Let's give it a try. Before and after. Oh. Oh. Is it any better? Y'all y'all will have to tell me. I kind of hit. Here, let's try to hit right there. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure, sure about that. Okay. New item. This is a, uh, a, um, a sweater that I have. Same sort of situation. Okay. On the top here, it feels very pilly. It's kind of gotten a lot of little lint balls. I'm going to use my eyes, honestly, to mostly look at this one. Is it helping out at all? Oh, a little bit. You got to be gentle. Yeah, be very gentle. Maybe? Here, let me try let me try down here I again. Can't chill. Right there. It's, I can chill. I can get a good, uh, <laughs> I, I, good view of that yeah, right there. I think I got some good shots. Maybe around here. I don't know about this. I guess judge by how much is in the little kinda, uh, bin. It kind of works. Okay. I'm like halfway on it. Here's the thing. This is like the size of a quarter. To cover an entire shirt with this, as delicate as you have to, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. It is getting small amounts of lint. So from both of those, picked up a, a bit of lint. Let's give it one more shot. This I got, and I remembered the inside of this after one wash was Filled with lint, it got on all my clothes. I really disliked it. Look at, this is the mother oh, love wow. of lint situations. I saved the best for last. Here, right there. See those little, little lint balls? Let's try to aim for those. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. It actually, these big ones. It's working. Okay. It's making it better. Some of the big, big, big balls of lint definitely got sucked up in there. I can see even more sort of lint situation in here. I think its biggest downside is that it will take forever to cover an entire <laughs> lint filled, uh, the entire blanket. Could you imagine me doing this entire Blanket, getting rid of all of the lint for this, this much at a time. That. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, it's kind of giving that plastic burnt motor smell. I wouldn't trust it. Even for five bucks, it, I, it worked. I was curious, would it break immediately? It didn't break immediately. Still would not recommend this if you have even this. I mean, I couldn't imagine getting all the lint off of this. That seems quite difficult. Back to you guys. <laughs> so there you go the the lint finder um yeah. i guess if you have something you love and you want to put the effort into getting it cleaned up yeah exactly five bucks exactly
And I and also, I, I mean, I think one of my big curiosities I, a bit was, does it even work? Is if I was to get a different one, will it still kind of suck up lint? Like, it, are all lint catchers kind of the same? And that, I feel like, was answered in the affirmative. Like, I was happy that I actually did see a, a difference, especially on, on that one sweater that I remember, you know, I bought it, I washed it, I put it on. <laughs> And then I was like, I don't think I can wear this again. There was so much lint coming off of it. So that's good. Um, and for, you know, mine uh, on discount, you know, the, the Marshall's discount was five bucks. This one is brand new from Walmart. Very similar, only $10. So if you want to find another type of lint situation, finder, cutter thingy, you can. Um, it kind of worked, kind of worked. I, I almost wish that there was like, you know, remember the Chom Chom? Oh, yeah. It's I want cash. that. Okay, I want that for, like, I want to be able to go, and then like all the lint is gone. I don't want, like, I don't want a tiny, I want a, and then it's all gone. You know, that's, someone make that and patent that. Okay, we need a Kickstarter <laughs> for that gadget. Um... Okay, really looking forward to the theme this month. Uh, so thank you to the patrons for your help in uh, choosing the theme. With that, let's head on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget well, our gadget warehouse this week is from Sweden, where Jacob T. says, I found an old gadget that I've had for many years and have been wanting to show you to see what you think of it. Uh, I speak mostly Swedish here where I live, but I hope you can understand me. Uh, I watched the video and uh, I'm very impressed with you. The way you did it. So here's Jacob's video from Sweden. Hello, Dick and Chad. This is a gadget that I found in one of my drawers that I bought uh, many, many years ago. I've been wanting to show it to you, but I thought I had thrown it out. Uh, but um, you can try and guess what it is. Yeah, it's a total good. Looks what the heck like is this? It? Yeah. About the size of a thumb. Uh, some sort of is wheel. it a scroll wheel? A wireless scroll wheel. Can you guess what no. it is? Uh, I think it's a laser at the front. Okay, is it like so a light? I've, been, I've put it on and it goes on your finger with uh, some uh, hook and loop uh, Velcro. Uh, uh, There's no way that's there. like a... And is it a mouse? also it makes a really nice uh, shadow figure. Hello, hello. <laughs> it does. It's a, it's <laughs> anyway, um, funny. what this is, what? is a finger mouse <laughs> for your computer. What? So what you do, you go to a website or, or your computer, you put this, uh, there's a little uh, USB transmitter. And what you do is, you can use this on any surface. You can use it on your leg, and it will move the mouse. Ah. You can use it uh, on the side of the the couch like this. Well, look how convenient it is. And it still moves yeah. the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> no mouse pad and on what an it airplane. Has is um, there is a scroll wheel. You scroll the way yeah. and also there are some, it's a bit difficult to see, I'll go back to the light here. There is a left mouse button there, and a right mouse button Oh my there. gosh, yeah. Uh, it is, I thought it was going to be magnificent and really useful <laughs> uh, when I bought it maybe 10 years ago. It is good, it's fun, um, it's useful sometimes when you, you, you're you short on space and uh, 
you can use it on your knee you can use it on uh, you can actually use it on on the laptop like this or or anywhere um, but I ended up not using it very much at all and uh, it's been in in the drawer for the last nine years so but i'm I'm still really happy that I found it and I uh, was able to show it to you um so this is a finger mouse it uh, runs with a um triple a battery uh that goes no in way. there so it's uh, it's a, <laughs> yeah I would have never thought that was a... it's not rechargeable <laughs> I would have never uh, thought I that pr prefer that there you go a finger mouse that is so <laughs> funny that is Jacob so... thank you that is Jacob, great that's... That's One of the, my really... favorite parts of it is that you need to use the elastic, elastic strap. It seems like it would have been, instead of, you know, this is just an example. Instead of it being strapped onto the outside of his finger, it seems like it would be so useful if you could just hold it like this and... Oh, oh, I see what you and mean. And then click, yeah. click, click, which would remove the need for a Velcro or a elastic, you know, if you just could do that. That is the best gadget, honestly. That is like Gizwiz gadget personified. <laughs> that is, you know, we already have mice. We already have uh, ways to control your, <laughs> and then just this new gadget that has been invented, the finger mouse. Love it. That is so funny. That is great. Jacob, that was great. Jacob, I will autograph a, an Alfred A. Newman picture. And it's a drag in the city to uh, send things overseas. Uh, I will send you a high-res image with your name uh, on the picture, and you can print it out at your end. Maybe use your little mouse to activate the printer. That was a very fun video. Jacob, thank you so much. And it's wonderful to know someone in Sweden um, is watching the show. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so no, no matter where you live... <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to live anywhere. You can live in the United States and still send us a video. Uh, anything to do with a gadget. Um, it, it's fun when you have an old gadget that you suddenly find it again and think, oh, um, I sort of like this. Anything. Something yes. you love, something you hate, uh, something you bought just recently and you want to show off or want people away from. Uh, make a little video, two to three minutes. Put it up on YouTube. When you upload, there's a drop-down menu. Just click uh, Unlisted, and then the uh, YouTube will give you a URL and send that to us. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And if we use your video and you live in the States or Canada, you'll get a picture. Uh, you'll get the current issue of Mad Magazine. Uh, if you live overseas, you'll get an autographed Alfred E. Newman picture that is now 40 years old. Mail at Gizwiz. Dot TV. And before Jacob goes back to bed, just want to say thank you. He's in chat right now. So I just want to say great video. Fantastic. And uh, have a good have a good sleep because I think it's <laughs> really late over there at the moment. <laughs> With that, let's move on to the letter. All right, this letter came to me with a little note. Dick, please read this on your show. Okay. Uh, so I am reading it on the show. Hi, Dick and Chad. Uh, hi, Chad and Dickie D. Just a review here. I love the uh, podcast so much. I'm kind of glad you moved away from Twit. Uh, you're, but you are now in Twit's retired podcast. Uh, I love fiddling with tech almost as much as I love the podcast. And Chad, please start up the video podcast version of OMG Craft again. But instead of reviewing, you could play mods and stuff. Yeah. I would be obligated if you would read this out on the show. <laughs> Perfect. Black Ninja 77. So, yeah. So, OMG Craft is so funny because it was independent and then it was Twit and then it went back to independent. And Twit would host the video podcasts of the show. Like, the show had a video podcast oh, feed. Oh, I see. Exactly. And so, when it went independent back to me, 
uh, I didn't update any of the video <laughs> podcast feeds. Um, so now everything is just on YouTube. It's just that's just the one place that OMG Craft lives. And, and, uh, and so if you want to catch the video version of it, YouTube is, is probably the only place, uh, I, I just, yeah. So anyway, uh, but I was, I've been thinking it might be time for me to start up a Minecraft podcast. I think, uh, I think a good Minecraft podcast might be a. Like a real, like a real podcast, you know. Get OMG Craft is so YouTube focused nowadays, uh, but I think it, I think a Minecraft podcast would be a great, a great thing. Thanks for the, the, yeah, I like that. I like that mm-hmm. a lot. Um, Sounds good, Diggy D. Good. I feel like you need, you know, you got. I, I think you're a podcast expert. Maybe you need to start a new podcast once or twice. <laughs> the Giz Fizz Two. The sequel? Mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Giz Fizz, Giz Fizz, and Giz Fizz is enough. But, but thanks for the thought. Of course. I, of wanna, course. I don't want to compete with you. <laughs> There's not enough room on the internet for more Dick D. Bartolo. <laughs> that's right. That's no, right. That's right. no yeah, more. No room. That's right. Um, thanks for the uh, for the letter. Uh, I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you, thank you, thank y'all so much for supporting our show. Every single episode, thank you so much. Head on over to patreon.com slash gizwiz to learn more, or you can head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab. There's a big old banner that'll take you to our Patreon page, or there's also a tiny little link that'll take you to our PayPal page if you want to tip via PayPal. Thank y'all so much for your support of our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Head on to gizwiz.biz. That's Sticky D's website where he writes articles about all the gadgets that we talk about on the show. I'm so excited because we get to find out what the heck was it? Now, I, I, I brought one of them with me. Do you, uh, you know the, what uh, that was or what that is? I had a suspicion that it, it uh, has to do with a crop, maybe a, a yellow corn-like crop. You are correct. Uh, it, one of the colors that comes in is yellow, and I thought that's going to really tip it off. But uh, like 50 people knew. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, so as we always say, your odds are better putting down funny answers than the real answer. And so we gave, we, when we get a ton of answers, we just pick six of them and say, okay, you, you got the winning uh, answer and you get six meds. The fun thing are the funny answers and, and, uh, I, I can read off some of them as we go go down. So those, those the top people really got it. That's what it was. Uh, but this is my favorite uh, answers: uh, fancy schmancy bedtime crystal earplugs for which people would snore. <laughs> crystal earplugs. And a <clears throat> pasta maker for making a single strand at a time. Ah. And three people sent that in. That is such a bizarre <laughs> answer. <laughs> Um, and, and ab roller for Barbie and this, I think, this, oh, Arnie, I think this is so clever, a very, very, very short jump rope. <laughs> now, when you look at it, that is so clever. Yes. It's like the handles are one on top of the other. That is a short jump what rope. What is this? A jump rope for ants? Yeah. That's uh, so funny. So that is funny. Um, pacifier for twins. <laughs> that one made me laugh the first time I read it. Safety yo-yo. The rubber bumpers protect furniture and small kids from injury when performing tricks. Uh, inconspicuous nostril plugs. <laughs> um, they're so clever. Uh, Dan inflatable in bookends. <laughs> and inflatable bookends. Custom-made neck bolt covers to child-proof Frankenstein's monster. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, chipmunks cheek stretcher so they can store more nuts than other chipmunks. Oh my gosh. Baby and then handlebars. Handle, yeah. Handlebars <laughs> for a baby scooter. That's Very great. Clever. 
That's very great. clever. Okay, well now we get to find out the newest, what the heck is it? Oh wait, well, I guess we already saw, actually, didn't we on the- Yeah, uh, we already, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there this is it. it. Is. Get a guessing, folks, uh, on uh, what this uh, gadget is. And um, uh, I hate I hate to give this one uh, away so early, but uh, there was actually mm-hmm. this uh, big fad, uh, circular lollipops. Uh, yeah, oh, circular. Wow. Actually, not circular. Wow. Cir- circular um, freeze pops. What are those called? Popsicles. That's what oh, it's, popsicles. That's oh, okay. what I'm thinking. Okay. Circular okay. popsicles. Uh, yeah, that was from that craze. I think it was uh, 2018, the uh, <laughs> circular popsicle craze. Yeah, I remember uh, you just, that. You try to turn it upside down so we wouldn't notice. So if you think uh, you know what this is, get a guess on gizwiz.biz, six mad magazines for correct answers, 12 mad magazines, double your chances for funny, clever, or hilarious answers. So get a guess on over at gizwiz.biz. Before we wrap up our show, I want to remind you, you can watch us live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time at our website. If there is ever a schedule change, it'll be posted right at the top of the website. Please head on over there uh, when we record live. The chat room is absolutely fantastic. They're amazing funny, clever. Please head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time, and watch the show. If uh, you're not watching it live, you can watch it after the fact there on our website or our YouTube page or on Apple Podcasts. With that, we'll see you next week. And we're week. back to oh. Thursdays. And we're back to Thursdays. We are. With yeah. No schedule changes at the moment. And now that we've said that, we've cursed ourselves. Most likely <laughs> next week we'll have some Probably. type of Probably. schedule change. Mm-hmm. Keep it locked to the website. Thanks so much, and we'll see y'all next week. I'll be here. <laughs>